Hello and welcome back to our fifth and final module in our Orion Learning course where we are learning about the role and functions of a turnaround coordinator. In the previous modules, we have learned about the importance of a turnaround plan as well as the importance of a turnaround coordinator to execute the plan. We have seen the pre-arrival checks that are done by the turnaround coordinator and we have seen his role and responsibilities during the process of turnaround. Let us now take a look at the final stage of responsibilities of a TRC after an aircraft has departed. Can you tell us what are the post-departure duties that you were mentioning TRC? The first rule that we follow is of good housekeeping. Every TRC has to ensure that the ramp is left exactly as we would like to find it. It should be clean and all equipment should be in their designated parking area. The people responsible to check this and report back to the TRC are the dispatcher and the ground crew. The checks that have to be performed are as follows. Check stand is clear and has no obstructions and no debris FOD. Coaches, aero bridge and or ladders parked in the box. Check stand equipment resource is present and in good working order. Example cones, SEG, FEPG, etc. If there's any fault, it needs to be reported. Check and report any spillage. No trip slips or fall danger. Reposition of equipment. Check SEG deactivated if installed. Are you finally free and done with your duties, TRC? Not quite. The final and equally important part of my job is billing and invoicing. What is your role in billing, TRC? As you are aware, professors, accuracy, speed and quality of service are the central elements of successful ground handling operations. Today, SLA service level agreements and SLM service level monitor are becoming more and more popular in ground handling contracts where real-time information is the key to on-time service delivery and end-to-end -end reporting. Billing for various flights are done with respect to various factors decided between the airline and the ground handling agency during the formation of SLA and SLM. These mainly depend on the type of aircraft, nature of flights, and requirement of manpower and equipment. Various clauses of delays, late reporting, damage, inconvenience, shortage, etc. are also incorporated in the SLA and or the SLM. Such activities may also depend upon a multitude of parameters based either on individual service contracts or on handling standards. These standard parameters include aircraft type, airline, parking position, whether it is at an aero bridge or at a remote stand, nature of flight, commercial, chartered, etc. What you are saying, TRC, is that you keep a record of every piece of equipment used and every service provided during a turnaround activity. That is correct, Professor. The agreement between airline operators and different ground service providers are very specific about the equipment to be used and the services provided. For example, an airline may not have contracted with their service provider for toilet cleaning at a transit station. However, if there has been some problem in flight and the crew has requested for toilet cleaning, then it is an additional service that would be billed for by the service provider to the airline. As the TRC in charge, I have to keep a note of this and inform both the airline and the service provider of the same. Did you have to order anything extra during this particular turnaround, TRC? 
If you remember, professors, I had to ask for an ambulance. It could have caused a deviation from the catering PTS. However, as part of my job, I have recorded that the delay in catering services was due to a medical emergency. So that the airline operator is aware of this and does not invoke any penalty clauses for deficiency of service with the catering service provider. How is the extra service or deficiency in service verified TRC? As you already know, professors, a TRC maintains a record for reporting and utilization of equipments and manpower for that particular flight for the airline in order to maintain a record. What the TRC needs to ensure is that the record is acknowledged and countersigned, along with remarks by the airline representative present there for billing purpose. Any shortfall or disservice needs to be justified with a valid reason for accounting purpose. Any additional handling services provided other than SLA should be checked and properly prepared on the service charge form with an acknowledgement and remarks of the airline representative for billing purposes. Thank you TRC. That was very informative and enlightening. Thank you professors. Any activity that requires results within a certain time frame and against certain norms must be tested. So also the performance of turnaround activity can also be tested. A. Measurement If all the checks and reporting systems as detailed in previous modules are followed, success criteria will be reflected in reduced accident rates with little or no loss in turnaround performance. Incident data and KPI information can be analyzed to measure the level of success. As we are also aware, the aviation industry encourages feedback. Comment forms are available for airlines and operators to feedback their observations which will be used to improve systems and processes. Finally, regular auditing should be carried out by the airlines and operators to ascertain the success of their standard operating procedure. With this, we come to an end to our Orion Aviation course on Turnaround Coordinator where we have learned the definition and importance of a turnaround plan the pre-arrival planning and checklists of a turnaround coordinator, the role and responsibilities of a TRC during the turnaround activity, the role of the TRC after departure of the aircraft. Thank you.